Hello, good morning. Uh, thank you for having me here in the DFRWS USA 2022. My name is Stuart Santanu, and I'm from the University of Passau in Germany. And today, I would like to discuss or present to you about my current work, which is flexible and secure and efficient support for self-service virtual machine introspection. Without further ado, let's jump right to it. Uh, this is the outline of my talk today. So first, I will briefly discuss some introduction, and then I will describe uh, some background knowledge. And then, of course, I will talk about some related works. And then next, uh, it's about our design, and then more into detail about our implementation, and then uh, our evaluation of our implementation and some of discussion. And at the end, I will conclude the talk. All right, let's begin with introduction. So virtual machine introspection, or VMI, is a way to monitor a virtual machine from the outside. So the goal is to gain information about the inner state of the VM itself. The VMI requires interaction with the hypervisor, which is considerably sensitive. But nowadays, it's also already caught uh, attention by the hypervisor uh, and antivirus companies as, uh, such as VMware, Kaspersky Lab, Bitdefender, and Gdata. And of course, as you already know it, uh, infrastructure as a service or IaaS is becoming even more popular. People can simply run a VM on the public cloud and host it, their application, their website, or whatever they want. But the problem is there is a still lack of VMI implementation on public cloud providers. So our research is try to fill on the gap and then to create an access control on the VMI. So at the end, our contribution of this, uh, this research will be uh, we propose the, uh, reproposing the para-virtualized device driver to enable access control and isolation of VMI. We also provide some discussion and implementation of VMI access control and isolation using Docker or container. We also resign, uh, reason about introspection application over the network and demonstrate uh, the low overhead implementation that integrates well into the existing uh, infrastructure. And then using this implementation, we also port real-life virtual machine introspection application, evaluate them in our context and in regards with other architecture and discuss their performance. Okay, then we move on to the background, which is I will discuss about virtual machine introspection itself. So virtual machine introspection can uh, help you to analyze a gas VM from the outside with the help of hypervisor. So it have full access to the state of the VM in particular to the main memory, as well as the state of the vCPU registers and virtual devices. So it requires no guest agent, which is really a good advantage. And then the analysis tool is actually isolated from the target VM, so it protects itself from the malicious manip manipulation. And then uh, there are two methods, which is asynchronous uh, or passive. For example, you have a timer in the introspection analyze uh, application to periodically analyze the target virtual machine uh, main memory introspection, for example, extracting process list. And then the second one, which is a synchronous or active, which is, is intercept the monitored virtual machine at specific location and its control flow to perform context sensitive analysis. For example, you want to intercept system call tracing, and then whenever the system call is being called, you try to analyze what is the input parameter being passed to the system call. Okay, so VMI requires privileged access to the hypervisor. For example, in the Zen, it requires uh, it uh, VMI is accessible via hypercalls that usually can be only used by the by a privileged process from the dome zero. And in the KVM subsystem, uh, which is they call it KVMI. Uh, VMI access to the virtual machine is exposed through the monitoring application via a Unix socket, domain socket on the host system. So what are the, uh, the use cases for the VMI? So the, the, mo the, the most uh, common one is the for malware analysis, since you don't need a guest uh, inside the guest VM, so it's pretty much transparent from the uh, malware. And then you have deception technology, or for example, like Honeypot, this is Honeypot or something like that. And then some of them are using it for OS hardening. There are some uh, publicly available VMI libraries, for example, libvmi, libkvmi, 
Drakwolf, and libvm trace. All of those are can be found on GitHub. Okay, so let's discuss some related works. So first, is a uh, cloud filactor is actually built and uh, and pre presented by a former colleague of mine. It's leverage uh, Zen modules to implement mandatory access to the VMI. Uh, and then next, my, uh, they, implement, uh, they extend it into Twin Porter, which is the extension, and then it, it uh, enables live migration. Both Cloud Filactor and Twin Porter is really specific only for Zen hypervisor. And next, uh, we have the Cloud VMI, which is exposed to the VMI capabilities over RPC, and then it can thus it's enabling a kind of VMI as a service. The biggest downside of this approach is actually the high latency that induced by the network communication. For the Fastive VMI, which is the, the only VMI variant that the Cloud VMI supports, the authors measure the overhead of the two orders of the magnitude compared to the using the native API of LibVMI. And then for the active VMI, it can be expected that it has more performance loss. And then uh, and then, of course, uh, you still also have the problem with the network connection. Next, we have Pernis, and then it's a, a VMI framework that uses sandboxing to enable self-service VMI for cloud customer. And then it's actually combining some concept of cloud filactor and cloud VMI. So instead of running the VMI application in an isolated virtual machine, it's used sandboxes of on the dome zero of a Zen-based system. And the, sand, the, the, the sandbox itself, it runs on, on the Linux namespace and use as a Linux and SecCom BPF for in, uh, enforcing the access control. So currently the furnace is only uh, available for Zen hypervisor, but uh, the implementation is pretty much incomplete and has not been updated since the publication uh, is, of the research is being released. And then the last one we have Frost which is a digital forensic tool for the OpenStack platform. So basically the goals is quite uh, the same. So it's providing self-service functionality for digital forensic investigation, targeting a user virtual machine in OpenStack based cloud. However, it is limited to providing selective functionality to the user. So, uh, so it doesn't enable the arbitrary VMI application for such investigation. All right, so how about the, the design? of our approach. So let's discuss about the goals and the assumption first. So the goals first, we have multiple flavors. And then of course we have the self-service introspection, secure access, and then isolation. And lastly, of course, the in easy integration into the cloud management tools. So some assumption that we made is the cloud provider should be trusted and the operating system itself is also trusted. And then for the security part, uh, an authorized tenant can only request introspection capabilities in one of those three flavors that we offer. And then uh, the access to the privileged uh, VM is, or instances is only possible via, uh, uh, by authorized user via SSH. But of course the tenant can configure and tailor the information to their needs. So, and finally, an authorized access to the privileged instance will only harm the monitored virtual machine. So this is the big overview of uh, how the system looks like. Uh, first, we have the VM to VM uh, uh, monitoring. So it's basically leveraging first IO VSOC, and then uh, we transform the Unix domain socket on the hypervisor into the Linux VSOC socket. And then the socket itself will be accessible via the monitoring VM. Next, we have the VM to container which is we leverage the bind to mount from Docker. So we can basically mount the Unix domain socket inside the Docker container where the monitoring library may access the socket directly without an in level of indirection. Next, we, all, uh, we use socket to enable the offer the network. So uh, we transform the, the Unix domain socket into TCP stream. And then through this relay, we can share the introspection capabilities with the other machine over the network. So such a machine can transform back uh, the, the TCP stream back into the Unix domain socket and then use the VMI tooling or application to their needs. So let's go a bit detail for, into our implementation. 
so for the on hardware and part of the machine well we utilize VSOC as we mentioned before and then we begin by deploying the monitoring virtual machine and then enable the VSOC so in this we need to adjust the monitoring ID and the VSOC name uh, on the monitoring VM and later on on the target virtual machine we also need to uh, specify uh, additional parameters including the monitoring CID and the VSOC uh, port so this setup will facilitate a directional a direct bidirectional connection between the introspection tool and the hypervisor and, and also at the end we also enable live migration for such systems so it's quite similar approach with the twin porter the work that i discussed before and however instead of using a custom driver to notify the monitoring tool of the state transition we leverage the existing VSOC driver which enhances the portability and aids in averaging security concerns uh, to transfer the actual uh, virtual machine, we employ the pre-existing live migration protocol in Kimu, which ease the integration into current cloud infrastructure and tools that can be upon it. Next, for the over the network, uh, so we leverage socket to forward and uh, the monitoring socket, which is actually originally only available on the hypervisor or the host operating system to the outside. So these forwardings allow us to keep the overhead a minimum for this to the other flavor that does require our TCP properties. First, we transform the file-based socket using socket on the, uh, using the first command, which you can see here. Uh, so you need to specify the parameters such as the where the Unix domain socket are located and then uh, to which IP address and port does the TCP trim needs to go to. And then on the client side, we need to specify the, the port, the target port, and then the, the new uh, location for the Unix domain socket. So at the end, the PMI application can use the, use, uh, the Unix domain socket to do their uh, PMI stuff. So on the Docker container, we use bind mounts, which is available by Docker. And then so we mount the folder that contains the VMI socket, so this is very performant, but it uh, relies on the host machine system having a specific directory structure available. So we separate uh, uh, the location of each uh, VMI socket into a specific folder and then mount it to the container. So uh, this is the command line. How does it work? So you need to specify again the parameters, where does it located on the host, and then where it should be mounted on the container. So this approach can ensure that the container may only monitor the assigned virtual machine and not the other isolated systems. And of course, a user can co communicate to the uh, can connect to the container via uh, secure share or SSH and performing the monitoring activities as usual. Next, we also integrated in OpenEbula. So OpenEbula uses sets of shell script to deploy or shut down a VM and such. So we add some uh, custom code, which is uh, written in Python. So whenever the, uh, the VM is about to deploy it, we try to uh, inject the parameters that, need, that is needed. And then on the user interface side, we also add some additional fields for the use, uh, using custom attributes. For example, on the left, you can see here, that's uh, where the user need to specify which VM can be monitored, uh, the, the, the current VM. And then on the right one is where does the data uh, TCP stream need to be sent for the over the network approach. So in, in, in all scenarios, we are able to extract the required information using the Python script or for example, the target VM, target IP, the net interface and the Docker mode from the user context that usually OpenEbula provided directly inside the virtual disk that uh, comes along the virtual machines uh, disk. Next, we go to our evaluation and discussion. So for evaluation, we employ the following configuration. For uh, now, the no VMI is basically the baseline, which is we don't run any VMI tooling. And then native, which is the native VMI running as root user and directly on the host. And then for feared IO is a VMI application that we did an isolated VM and co-located actually with the target VM using the feared IO VSOC. 
And then the net cohost, which is the VMI application within an isolated VM co-located with the target VM using network communication for the VMI operation. Next, there is a net remote, which is the VMI application on remote client using VMI operation over the network. And then from Docker, which is the VMI application running inside the Docker container that runs on the host. For our benchmark environment, we use Intel E3-1230 version 5, which is running on 3.4 gigahertz. And then it's our main server. And then our second server is uh, using Intel Xeon E5-2609 uh, version 3, which is running on 1.9 uh, gigahertz as a migration target. Both of the servers has a six, uh, 64 gigabyte of RAM, runs Debian 11 with the kernel 5.4.24, and then all the VMs from the target VM and the monitoring VM only has one CPU for each, and then 668 megabyte of RAM, and then runs Debian 10. For over the network, we use the network uh, interface that less than 0 0.6 millisecond latency and the 940 megabit per second, and it's measured using iperf. So let's move on to the first uh, performance measurement, uh, which is comparing the performance of Zen and KVM. In this uh, measurement, we use Saracenia Honeypot, which is a VMI based SSH Honeypot, and then runs that uh, used to be only runs on Zen, and then we port it to the KVM. On the paper, it's basically described two ways uh, of uh, performance measurement, which is system wide and function tracing. We, we do all, all the same. And then, uh, as you can see from the function, uh, from the system call tracing, so run, uh, running the LS command on KVM has a better performance than on the Zen which is uh, the KVM impact around 150%, and then on Zen is around 200%. But on the other hand, Zen performs better uh, in the uh, wget command, which is around 55%, comparing to the KVM, which is uh, 74%. So uh, this can be explained by KVM requiring more interrupts for its paratypical drivers. However, the difference can be considered pretty small. And next for the uh, function tracing, uh, comparing to the baseline, the overhead of the KVM is more or less plus around 20%. And then on the Zen is like around 25 until 28%. So, but overall for this use case, VMI on KVM performs better than VMI on Zen. Next, we also try to uh, use the volatility tree uh, at the beginning, Volatility 3 only uh, used the VMI FS, which is uh, uh, mount the VMI into some kind of file system and then Volatility 3 using, uh, use it to do the introspection. So we created a new data layer so it can use the VMI interface directly. Uh, and then we run it 50 times. And then as you can see here that the first IO and the from Docker actually have a uh, uh, good performance uh, compared to the native one. Okay, next, we also mentioned the performance of the introspection using a passive VMI. So we use a simple VMI program that ship directly with the VMI to fetch the process list of the virtual machine. So we modify the program, so we exclude the startup, the configuration, and the I.O. operation from the measurement. So we, we repeat this uh, measurement 50 times, and each time it extract the process list by a total for 5,000 times. We also ensure that we flush the cache of every iteration, so uh, the, the measurement uh, evaluate the memory reading mechanism directly. So the from Docker has clearly the lowest overhead of all secure service variants, being, being around 30% slower than the baseline native method, and then over the network suffers the worst, which is around 2,000%. And then the field I.O. method is around 260% overhead. So again, from this number, the from doctor is proven to be the best solution, while the network approach are unfavorable. Next, we also try to measure, uh, assess, the per or assess the performance uh, impact of the target virtual machine with regards to the active uh, introspection mechanism. So we have to, we tested with two uh, mechanism. First, we place a hyper breakpoint on the system call handler of the get PID, which is then repeatedly invoked from a user mode process. For the second case, we configure a VM exit on 
a VM exit on write access to the CRT register in the VM. Then on the target VM, we calculate the first 1.5 million iteration of Chatnovsky formula for the approximation of pi. So the result is shown in this figure, and then we repeat it 50 times, and then uh, we observe that they are deploying active introspection on the mechanism of the networks inflicts a high overload or really high overload on the introspective machine. And the rest is, is pretty much comparable. Uh, so the from Docker and the field IO uh, has the best the best two performance. So based on the uh, our performance measurements so far, field IO and from Docker so far to be proven to be the best two solution. So of course we also evaluate the deployment of the monitoring mechanism by observing the start of the analysis environment and the successful connection between the introspection application and the hypervisor. And uh, you can, as you can see the result, the from Docker, of course, has a really faster uh, deployment mechanism than the VM because it's only uh, employing Docker container. But uh, we can argue that both of them have have a acceptable deployment time. Next, we also try to measure the VMI live migration, like the twin porter. And then we, we use two modes, which is the first one is a sequential transfer in which we migrate the monitoring virtual machine first and then followed by the monitor or target virtual machine. And a, a parallel transfer, which is we transfer both the monitoring and the target VM together. And then as the baseline, we try to transfer one VM without any monitoring mechanism. And as you can see, of course, the power mig uh, migration is uh, faster than the sequential since you migrated both at the same time. Okay, so next we want to discuss about the robustness and the integrity of our approach. While all those three flavors of isolation can be considered secure under our security model, the degree of isolation is certainly, of course, varying. Uh, so for example, like uh, from the Docker, it, it in essence, it expose the entire system call to the host operating system where from the virtual machine is only exposed in the minimum interface uh, of the hypervisor. And then of course we consider the remote uh, access to be the more isolated since it's not even co-located uh, with any other virtual machine or entity in the cloud. Therefore the attack is only consists of the relay tool which is using SOCA. And of course, uh, we need to be aware that actually the decision of the risk have some trade-off, which is performance. So uh, as I explained already in, by our uh, evaluation, the higher isolation of the environment is acquired to higher uh, performance degradation and lower introspection performance. On the other hand, but it can be still be uh, beneficial for some application, for example, continuous monitoring to guarantee integrity of the analysis environment. So therefore, we can represent the, the introduced flavors on two-dimensional grid, as you can see here. And then uh, the, the, the one that we represented with X is actually the native VMI, which is we consider is without any security, uh, have low robustness and low integrity, since it is neither isolated from the host, nor does it protect the integrity of the analysis result. So now into the last part of my talk, which is I will conclude my research and the, uh, my talk and then discuss some future works. So we introduced an architecture for flexible, secure, and efficient self-service virtual machine introspection, where it incorporates three distinct methods, uh, which is Docker container, dedicated virtual machine, and remote access. And then to this end, we integrated our approach into publicly available cloud management tool, namely Open Nebula. And then furthermore, we also have ported existing VMI-based applications such as VMIFS and Saracenia Honeypot into KVM. So uh, our result actually indicates that the Docker uh, approach has superior performance over the other approaches. And then for the future work, we will try to enhance the code and then we will publish it so people can try to use it. And then hopefully in the future, there's some public cloud providers that provide VMI capabilities. So that's all for my talk today. Uh, and then thank you for having me. 
if there is any questions feel free to send me an email